Stanley's going to take it to the house. Just what the doctor ordered for the Buffalo's offense, and they grab the lead. Pure speed. Colorado came into this game thinking, hey, they've got a speed advantage on the outside. And you saw it right there. Well, that was one of the more dynamic plays in that victory, 35-32 for the Buffaloes at Stanford before the bye week. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. You know, we're going to say the best for first here today. we got athletic director Rick, Rick George with us for a couple of minutes. How about your 2-0 football team right now? Um, it's exciting, you know. Um, Expected, at yeah. least by me it was. Um, but, um, you know, I'm really excited uh, for them. You know, just the opportunity that they have to compete and to play, and they're doing it at a high level. No spring practice. They no. were told there was no football season. Then there was. And then, you know, we've had some county orders that have slowed us down a little bit. And, you know, they're just resilient. And uh, to see them have success in the first two games is, uh, is great to see. You know, we should say this, though. Rick, being that he says he's not surprised, every year when we sit down before the season, he's always like, oh, we're going 12-0. and 0. There's no doubt about it. No, I don't. I say we're going to win more than we lose. <laughs> He's always very optimistic. Let's just put it that way. That's right. So the Buffs didn't play this past weekend after Arizona State. It's uh, not un, you know, not surprising if you see it happen around college football that uh, somebody gets hit with COVID and then they can't play. So ASU could not play this past weekend. And I know there was a lot of hope amongst the Buff Nation out there that maybe the Buffs would play. Turns out we didn't play. Talk a little bit about kind of that decision. Well, look, I, I applaud the decision that the conference made, mm -hmm. and I think it's the right decision, and I think you'll see some of our schools that will utilize that if there's not an option in the conference. Just the timing of when it was approved, it just doesn't give us enough time to prepare. Sure. Uh, and, you know, we've got a lot um, ahead of us. You know, we've got USC uh, coming up. Uh, we've got Arizona, you know, we've got Utah. Yeah. We've got a lot to play for moving forward, and um, we're excited about that. So that's kind of the reason, you know, that we didn't. But will we utilize it in the future if it becomes available to us? Absolutely. Sure. Uh, did you get a little bit of advice from, from fans uh, emailing you and dropping you notes about what, <laughs> what kind of decision you should be making? I always get uh, <laughs> advice from fans, and, uh, uh, and I appreciate it. <laughs> you bet. You know, one of the odd things about this season, not only the fact that you have a game that was scheduled all so none that doesn't happen is the way we broadcast road games. And we had our cameras inside the Buff Vision control room before that Stanford game and taking a look at how we broadcast that radio broadcast that day. Snap, fakes the handoff. He's going to run right in himself. Neuer got hit at the one, dives, hit zone. Touchdown, touchdown, Colorado. Well, we're coming to you from the Buff Vision control room. Normally, we would be in a booth in sunny Palo Alto, California, at the Stanford Stadium calling the game. One of the uh, challenges that we're facing is trying to get uh, the sights and the sounds from each stadium sent to us. And we're using uh, internet meeting technology. And uh, it's a very odd thing to, uh, to be reliant on something that... Uh, people were only normally using for company meetings now to uh, give us what we would normally be getting in person by hanging a microphone out a window we're now getting from a uh, computer internet meeting service. None of the uh, broadcast crews for the Pac-12 are traveling. They're all doing it from different locations. As a matter of fact, some of the people are doing it from their homes instead of uh, in a control room like this. So each team has their own unique way of overcoming some of the COVID challenges that we're all facing. As a matter of fact, our unusual situation is that uh, our color analyst, the famed coach Gary Barnett, he is home in Arizona while Mark Johnson is here in the control room at the event center on the campus in Boulder to call his side of the game. And we're listening to Gary via fantastic technology from his home in Arizona. Certainly a unique situation as you broadcast that ball game. Buffs getting ready to take on now USC, of course, this weekend as we continue with Rick George, the athletic director here at the University of Colorado. You know, we've got basketball coming up this week. Both the men's and women's teams in action. And I know you're very optimistic about both of those as well. I, I'm very optimistic about both of those. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what that, that'll bring us. I know JR's excited. They get to play at home on Wednesday and uh, really excited to be able to see them. And then, you know, Tad and, uh, and the boys kick off at uh, – uh, or tip off, I guess I should say, uh, in Manhattan on Wednesday. And and, and again, it just goes, I, I'm really thrilled that our student athletes can compete. They've worked hard. They've done what we've asked them to do. They've followed protocols, all those different things to allow them to compete. And now this is their opportunity to shine. And um, I'm really looking forward to both teams. You know, Rick, one, 
thing that you're touching on kind of uh, as disciplined as the student athletes have been, we see not only around the state but around the country as well, kind of a heightened sense moving into different colors and, and raising the, the, the expectations, if you will. That creates new challenges from an athletic department standpoint, doesn't it? Well, it does. And, and, and I think for us, you know, the consistency of our protocols have been excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we just continue to follow those protocols. And then as uh, changes come in orders, then we adjust. Uh, we've got a really good team that's that's focused on that, and uh, and look, our our you know you can have the best protocols in the world, but if your student athletes and your coaches and your staff aren't following, yeah. they do no good. And so I give a lot of credit to the discipline of our, our student athletes, our coaches, and our staff in adhering to what those protocols are. You know, I don't think we've, we've talked in any official capacity on one of our shows about Miguel Rueda and, and the medical staff and the job they've done laying out the protocols and kind of guiding us through this. Yeah, I mean, M Miguel's a superstar. I mean, he's he's done an incredible job. Dr. Podar, I mean, all of our, our trainers now are almost like lab technicians because <laughs> We're testing every single day, so they're doing the testing, and you know they're putting in a lot of hours and a lot of time. And you know I just applaud uh, what they've done, and uh, you know our, our our focus is the health and safety of our student athletes, our coaches, and our staff, and our our, our community. All right, we'll keep up the great work. Ah, uh, thanks. Go Buffs. All right, that's Athletic Director Rick George. As we continue here in the Buffalo Stampede with basketball getting underway this week, we're going to talk some hoops for the Buffaloes coming up next.